Hi. Hi, Diego. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Very well. Thanks for asking. OK. Um, I guess we can get started now. Um, I'm David, and I'll be your literature teacher today. Uh, I've pulled out a few readings that we'll go over as a class and try to make sense of. Um, and I thought, since the first thing we're going to be reading is a poem about a dog, I thought an interesting way to start out the class would be uh, for us all to introduce ourselves, say where we're from, and then uh, tell everyone the sound a dog makes in our country. Um, so I'm David. I'm from Massachusetts in the USA. And where I'm from, dogs go woof, woof. Uh, Anderson. And Anderson. Hello. Are you there? Diego. Diego? Hello. Hi. Okay, I'm Diego. I am from Colombia. And in my country, a dog says, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, Diego, two. Diego, two. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Your mic might be muted, so uh, in the upper right-hand corner, yeah. it's unmuted. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yes, okay. So, I'm from Brazil, and I've been studying English about six months, at, yeah. And every day I am participating in classes on Verblin, and I see that I improve my English. Um, Great. Great? Okay. <laughs> well, what does a dog, what sound does a dog make in your country? Um. Oh, here in Brazil, but just study. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh. So in the U.S. we say, woof. In Colombia, I guess they say whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. What does whoa. this dog? What is it? <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. It is. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, oh, wow. uh, Anderson, I, I'm not really sure how to pronounce your name, but are you with us right now? Okay, I'll, I'll give him a few more moments. Uh, Julissa, welcome back. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Julissa. I'm from Peru. And well, here dogs are the same as in Colombia. They say, wow, wow. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Rasal. Hi. Hi, I'm Rasal from New York, and in New York, U.S., as you mentioned, dog says woof woof. Where are you from originally? Well, I am originally from subcontinent, Indian subcontinent, and, and, but, and we say there, oh, oh. <laughs> cool, thanks. Uh, Simone. Simone, I think your mic might be muted, um, so you can unmute that in the upper right-hand corner, but I'll give you another few minutes. Uh, Sophia. Sophia, are you there? Sophia Santos Juarez. 
I think your your mic Hi. might be muted. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Can you talk to your Yes. Uh, can you tell us? Oh, hmm, weird echo is going on right now. Uh, can you tell us where you're from and the sound a dog makes? Yes. Uh, can you tell us? I am from Peru. Can you tell us where you're oh, from? Okay, I'm gonna have to mute you for a second. Oh man. I think that Sophia, your uh, your mic. Oh, I think uh, your original verbling page might be open. Uh, so uh, try and X out of that home page, and so that all you can see is the Google Hangout. I think that's what's causing that uh, echo effect. So I'll come back to you, uh, Victor. Yes. Yes, baby. Where are Hi. you from? I'm from Dominican Republic. This is more Iceland. You know, uh, I don't know what to say you. What what sound does a dog make where you're from? Sorry. What what does a what sound does a dog make? Sorry, I don't understand. Okay, here I don't, is, I don't, I don't. it's woof woof. Other places it's uh, wow wow. Bow wow, a dog. Ah, do you know I hear, hear dog? No, I don't have dog. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, Bera. Yes, Is that Bera? Am I saying Bera, your name yes. correctly? Yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, yeah, I'm not up to date on my Cyrillic reading, but I think I <laughs> got it down. Uh, that's right. Can you tell us? Where you're from and the sound a dog makes. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm from Moscow, Russia, and uh, just uh, in the books we read it like uh, gav gav, but uh, just uh, in nature it's not so. Okay. Oh, Vera, right, Vera. Yes. That's how you say your name. Um, who did I? Uh, Jorge. Are you there? Your mic is muted. So you, you have to unmute it in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Jorge? OK, it seems like you're having some difficulty there. I'll give you another chance later. And uh, who else did I skip? Uh, Sophia, would you like to try again? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I am I am from Peru, from Lima. And what does a dog sound like where you're from? What? What what sound does a dog make in uh, Peru? A dog? Yes. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, that's fine. Thanks, uh, Victor. Yeah, tell me, tell me, babies. Okay, can you tell us where you're from and the sound that a dog makes? How? 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 <laughs> Something like this. Interesting. <laughs> And where are you from? I'm from, you know, a small island from in Caribbean. This, I'm from Dominican Republic. So close to Jamaica, Cuba. Sweet. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Uh, Jorge, would you like to give it another try, or should we just get started? OK, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more time to figure it all out. Um, in the meantime, let's do some reading. Uh, so I've, I've posted the link to the document we'll be reading from, and I'll also screen share it. Um, so I'll do that right now. And the first 
poem that we'll be reading today is called Another Reason Why I Don't Keep a Gun in the House by Billy Collins. He was the poet laureate of the U.S. Uh, in the early 2000s, and he's a very popular poet here, probably the most popular living poet in the U.S. Um, Diego, would you like to read the first stanza for us, please? Which one? <laughs> the first stanza of this poem that starts, The Neighbor's Dog. Okay. The neighbor's dog will not stop barking. He's barking the same high, rhythmic bark. Oh, it's pronounced he's... rhythmic. Rhythmic? Rhythmic. It's a, a rhythm is a, a beat, like a... Rhythmic. Yes. Okay. The neighborhood dog will not stop barking. He's barking the same high, rhythmic bark that he barks every time they leave. I'm sorry, somebody. Okay. They leave the house. They must switch him on on their way out. Thanks. That was very good. Uh, any any questions? Yes, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's try and parse this. The neighbor's dog. So the dog of the people that live next door, he's making, a, he is barking, which is the noise that a dog makes. He's going woof, woof. He's, he's doing it uh, in a high pitch, rhythmically. And whenever the neighbors, those who live next door, leave him, he makes this noise. And so he says, they must switch him on on their way out. Uh, can someone answer this question for me? What is the meaning of that last line? They must switch him on on their way out. Does uh, anyone want to try and answer that? I think that normally you switch on an alarm, maybe a house alarm. Yeah, that's oh, that's interesting. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I think that's that's right on the yeah. That's that's the best answer that I can think of. Yeah. So maybe they are comparing the dog with uh, an alarm because it takes care of your house, something like that. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was I was thinking it might also be like turning on a TV or something. Um, that's something commonly that, like if you're in a, a hotel, it's annoying to hear the people next door's TV going off really loud. Yeah. But, yeah. But thanks, Lisa. Uh, Diego Rafael, would you like to give the second stanza a try? Okay, teacher. Um, the neighbor's oh, the neighbor's dog will not stop barking. I close all the window in the house and put on Beethoven symphony full blast, but I can still hear him muffled under the music, barking, barking, barking. Okay, that was good. Uh, you mispronounced symphony and Symph muffled, muffled. Muffled. Yes, but otherwise that was very good. Um, so can you tell us what two measures the speaker takes to block out the sound of the dog? Okay, maybe I close all the windows and the Beethoven Symphony. Good, yeah, yeah. that's right, thanks. Um, and do these measures work? No, it didn't. Right, it did not work because he's still barking, barking, barking. Thanks. Uh, thanks D to the two Diegos. <laughs> uh, okay. Jorge, are you there? Seems that you're still muted, maybe. Um, so if you could try to unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone button on the upper right hand, 
uh, corner of your screen. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to come back to you one more time, and if we still can't hear you, I'm going to unfortunately have to eject you, but uh, no hard feelings, hopefully. Uh, okay, so Lisa. Okay. Would you like to read this stanza? And now I can see him sitting in the orchestra, his head raised confidently as if Beethoven had included a bark for barking dog. Great. Uh, raised. His head raised. It's one syllable. His head raised. Yeah. Confidently. But good job otherwise. And uh, would you like to answer question three for us? What words let us know what, that the speaker's vision of the dog as a concerto solo is, is imaginary? Well, I think when he says that he sees the dog sitting in the orchestra, I think that's imagine, imaginary. Yes. Right, yeah, I think so too. Uh, what, are there any other words that let us know that this is imaginary? That it's hypothetical. Oh, that there is a part for as maybe a, a barking dog solo where the dog is well, like see, yeah. singing, barking dog. I, I'm thinking more specifically about the two words just here, as if. As, as if, if Beethoven. Beethoven. Ah, yeah. As if Beethoven had included, yeah. Right. It's um. It's kind of a uh, a conditional, subjunctive kind of mood that lets us know that it's um, completely hypothetical. But your other answers were, were good, too. Thanks. Uh, any questions from anyone at this point? If what, not... Uh, what, oh, does, yeah. what does muffled mean? I can still hear him muffled under the music. Muffled. muffled. Muffled is um, when there's something blocking a sound. So um, I'm I'm muffled right now. I put my if you put your hand over your mouth, the sound you make is muffled. And the part of a car that makes it quiet, uh, the engine quieter is called a muffler in English. Okay, blocking the sound. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, Lias. No, yes. Hi, welcome. Hi, 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 everybody. It's my first time in uh, verb eating. Oh, thank you. Uh, welcome. I'm just uh, looking for uh, the option. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm lost. You're lost. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just. Uh, my native uh, language is uh, French. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, see, see me. I can't see you, but uh, I can hear you. Uh, you can see me. I'm uh, looking for the option uh, when uh, to check my uh, my calm. Uh, I didn't find to check uh, what uh, to uh, to uh, to. Put, uh, on right, my I, there might be a button in the upper right hand corner of your screen that turns your camera on and off. Uh, I, I, just like just like this. You can uh, see it. No, still no. I think it's. Uh, okay. well, I have a problem with my camera. Okay, well, while you're figuring that out, I'm going to. Uh, go to someone else. Uh, Jorge, are you, are you there? Okay, Jorge, I think I'm going to have to eject you. Don't Please don't take it personally. Uh, but it, it, this way we can open it up to someone with a functional setup. I have no, no objection. Uh, next time I can... Uh, but I, it's my first time. I, uh, I, uh, I found that uh, website is uh, awesome. Good. Thanks. I, I think, thank you, everybody, for my uh, first time uh, time uh, conversation in English. Uh, I hope uh, with uh, uh, with more practicing, I will uh, speak uh, more fluently. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, hey, Mina, welcome. Are you there, Mina? Mina. Mina, are you there? Okay, I'll give you a second to figure it out. Uh, Rasal. Hey, Rasal. Hello. Hi, Mina. Would you like to read uh, a paragraph Hello? of this? Oh, hi, Rasal. Yeah. I'm going back to Mina now. Okay. I'll be right with you. Okay. Mina, would you like to read uh, a stanza of this poem for us? Okay. Um, can you tell me where I start? Okay. When the record finally ends. Okay. Um... When the record finally ends, he is still barking, sitting there in the op section barking. Oboe. Oboe. I couldn't see clearly, that is the reason. Okay. He, his eyes fixed on the, the conductor who is, and, oh, it's lost. Um, and treating him with his it's, what is bell or button? Baton. Baton. Yeah, it's um okay, any vocabulary that uh you need help with there? Um, or anyone? Oboe. Oboe? An oboe is a kind of instrument. Um a musical instrument. It's a musical instrument. Yeah. Um, and Mina, would you like to, do you know the, the meaning of the word entreat, of entreating? Entreat. Um, I'm not sure about the meaning. Can, does anyone know the meaning of the word entreat? Okay, it's, uh, it means to ask, ask someone to do something uh, either anxiously or earnestly. Uh, it means, uh, yeah, to to ask someone to do something with a sense of urgency or need. What is the difference between treat and entreat? Okay, a treat is, um, for example, a piece of candy can be a treat. Yeah. Um, or you treat someone to something special. Special, yes. Um, entreat means to ask someone to do something. So if you are, for example, if you, someone is going to kill you, you might entreat that person uh, to spare like your life. Like begging? Like... It's similar to begging, yes. Okay, okay, got it. Um, and... A baton. Can someone define baton for us? Any volunteers? Baton. It says ticker for a conductor. Yes, very good. Thanks. It's uh, Vera got it right. It's a stick that a conductor, someone at the head of an orchestra, holds to mark the beat and uh, uh, the dynamics of a piece. All right, great. Uh, who's next? Uh, Rasal. Hello? Hi, would you like to read uh, the next stanza? Okay. While the other musicians listen in respectful silence to the famous barking dog solo, that endless quota that first established Beethoven as an innovative genius. And in what sense is the dogs barking an endless coda? Anyone can answer. Does anyone know, does anyone need help uh, understanding the meaning of an endless coda? 
Anyone? When the dog is making the solo, solo part. Right, yes, thanks. A coda is a, a musical term. In classical music, it's a, a coda is a section that ends a piece of music. It's the very end. Um, and an endless coda, so basically the, the music that the poet has played to drown out the sound of the dog barking has ended. And so it's as if the dog, the dog blended with the music, so it's as if the dog was a soloist. But now that the music has ended, it's as if the dog's solo is ending the piece, but it's really endless, it's going on forever. Uh, does, does that make sense? Any questions on that? Um, yeah, I guess an endless coda is in a way an oxymoron. Can someone tell me what an oxymoron is? Well, something that someone that speaks the same thing again and again. An, an oxymoron is uh, it's one or, or a few words that uh, has, consists of opposites. So like, um, let me think, uh, uh, a famous one would be jumbo shrimp is an oxymoron, or a poor rich girl is an oxymoron. An endless coda in a way is a, an oxymoron. Any questions? Okay, uh, if, no, if there are no questions, I think we'll move on. Um, I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm planning now for us to read excerpts from a book called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, and we're going to be reading from the chapter A True War Story. Um, this is a pretty intense, emotional uh book and it's one of my favorite books um, and it's uh, so but it's pretty serious so brace yourself um, it's also fairly difficult so don't hesitate to ask any questions um, Sophia would you like to start us off with the first paragraph here Sophia, are you there? Sophia, okay. Uh, Sophia, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Victor, would you like to yes. start? Yes. Would you? Um, um, uh, right. Uh, the word this hair, but there's no the hair of this because. The world is mystery. This terror is adventure, 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 adventure. In coherence, coherence, courage, coherence, and discovery and holy, holiness, holiness. The um, pity, the um, respect, the um, larger, the love. Thanks. Thanks. So I'll just read it again for you. Uh, okay. War is hell, but that's not the half of it. Because war is mystery and terror and adventure and courage and discovery and holiness and pity and despair and longing and love. So okay. this... Uh, this book, by the way, is about the Vietnam War and this man's experience fighting uh, for the U.S. against Vietnam. Um, okay. So, Victor or anyone else who would like, uh, would you? Can you tell me what "that's not the half of it" means? That's not the end. It means. Yeah, it's not the end. That doesn't, it means, it doesn't even, there is a lot more than meets the eye, maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, good job. Um, and what are the 10 things that he equates war to in this paragraph? Mystery, terror, adventure. Yeah, courage. Courage, discovery, holiness, pity, despair, longing, and love. Great, good job. Uh, does anyone need uh, a definition for any of those words? Yes, what is pity? Um, pity is feeling sorry for someone or, s yeah. Hi. What is, uh, what is despair? Despair is sorrow, sadness. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, thanks. Victor for reading, uh, and Vera, would you like to read the next few lines for us? Yes. Uh, war is nasty, war is fun, war is thrilling, war is drudgery, war makes you a man, war makes you dead. And which words in these two lines are antithetical or contradictory to each other? Which ones are opposites? Mm -hmm. Nasty and warm is opposite, and, nasty and fun. yes, and the other two words also opposite. Thrilling and drug drudgery. Drudgery. Uh, drudgery, I believe, means um, hard, boring work. Well, oh, hard work. then it's not opposite. And being a man and being dead are are opposites, right? Okay, good job. Thanks, Vera. Um, Monsif, are you there? Uh, can you speak? Is your mic on? Okay, I'll, I'll give you a second there, and uh, we'll go back to... Oh, what about uh, Lias? Lias, yes. Oh, Monsif, yeah. Hi. What what's oh, yes. what uh, sound does a dog make in Algeria? Dog make? I don't understand what dog make means. Uh, what word do you use to replicate the sound <coughs> of a dog? Hello. Anybody can hear me? Hi, see if we can hear you. Thanks. I'll be right. I'll, I'll get okay. right back to you. Can I have okay. a link of uh, for the, the text, please? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, Edward just wrote, this class is very interesting, but, my, but in my opinion would be better if the professor, David, explain first everything. Thanks, Edward. Uh, okay. So, Monsif. Yeah. Uh, would you like to read the next paragraph for us? Okay. <coughs> Anybody can hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I will start. Uh, the truths are contradictory. It can be argued, for instance, that war is grotesque, but, it, uh, but in the truth, war is also beauty for all its horror. You can't help but give a awful majesty of combat. Okay. Who knows what the word gape means? Anybody? Okay, gape. To gape means to uh, be open. It describes a state of being open. Um, but in this case, it specifically means... Um, really? Uh, having an open mouth at something in in shock or awe, like uh, your mouth drops and you, it's like your face is gaping. It's kind of, uh, uh, d does that make sense? Gaping means surprise. Uh, part, uh, Chalisa, what did you say? 
It's like being surprised. Yeah, being surprised. Sure. Yeah. Mina? Um, I... Were you saying something earlier? Yeah. I'm not sure. Gape means... It's, uh, gape means the hole. You, you described differently. I couldn't get it. What... Yes, uh, it's like a... What does it mean? A hole. Yeah, but well, you describe different. Well, here I'll show This is, to me, this is what it means, like, because you're, it's almost like your mouth is a gape at something. Okay, does that, uh, does that clarify things for you? To stare with an open mouth. Okay. Yeah. It has uh, multiple meanings. Uh, but yeah, pri prime, I guess the, the most common meaning in English is actually to stare with an open mouth. Get okay. Uh, uh, and can someone tell me what the speaker means when he says awful majesty? Awful majesty. Does, does anyone know what the word awful means? It, it means like terrible. terrible. Yes, terrible, very bad. And does anyone know the meaning of the word majesty? Mm. It's something that you respect. So in, in this case, it's like contradictory because if it's awful, if it's something majesty, how it can be awful? Right. There are a lot of, it, again, it's an oxymoron. Yeah. Thanks. Um, majesty comes from the Latin word uh, maior, I believe, meaning um, uh, better or greater. Like uh, the island of Mallorca, same root. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, let's see. Who? Uh, Lias. Yes. Have you read yet? Would you like to read? I'm looking. Uh, where, where, where are you? Exactly? We're at, it's not pretty exactly. It's on the third page. It's on the third page, yeah. Third page. Uh, a true war story. Pardon? To true war story. What uh, is the hell? But, but oh no, it's, it's not, not. I think it's on the fourth page then. Fourth page. Uh, vocabulary. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. It's not in third page. Ah, yes. It's not pretty, exactly. It's uh, astonishing. It uh, feels the A. It's common to you. You had, it, you had it, yes, but your eyes don't. Uh, the do, do not. not. Thanks. Do not. Uh, anyone need uh, help with vocabulary there? Astonishing. It feels A. What means it feels A? It, could you repeat that, please? It fills the A. It fills the I. It, um, it fills the I. Yes. It means that it's basically a poetic way of describing looking at something and having all of your attention focused on that thing. Okay. I understand. Thanks. Uh, any more yeah. questions? What is astonishing. That? Yeah. Astonishing. Astonishing. Uh, Shocking, surprising. Surprise, yes. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Uh, you guys are all doing a great job, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that at the last minute I changed this class from beginning to intermediate, and we're kind of, this is pretty advanced prose in a lot of ways, so uh, thanks for sticking in there with us. Um, okay, would. Uh, would Diego Carasquilla like to give the next paragraph 
Let's yeah, try. sure. Thanks. Okay. Like a killer forest fire, like cancer under a microscope, any battle of bomb or bombing, raid or artillery barrage has the aesthetic purity of absolute moral indifference, a powerful, impeccable beauty. Yes. And a true war story will tell the truth about this. Thought the truth is ugly. Thanks. Okay, a few Beautiful. few words there. Um, okay. Barrage. Barrage. Okay. Uh, this this word is pronounced aesthetic. 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 Um, and though. Though. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, ugly. Okay. Ugly. 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 Oh, beautiful. Do you do you need uh, the definition of ugly? Mm, yes. Okay. Uh, ugly is uh, yeah. It's the op opposite of beautiful. beautiful. It's uh, like a monster is ugly. <laughs> okay. Uh, and here's here's some vocabulary here. Uh, aesthetic means relating to perceived appearance or beauty. It's uh, aesthetic. It's a kind of complicated, almost metaphysical word. Um, moral indifference, a lack of commitment to good. Um, our morals are uh, the what we classify as. Yeah, morality is how we classify good and bad, and if we're morally indifferent, we don't care about good or bad. We just act. And implacable, I guess, means uh, unstoppable. So, th yeah, this is a very uh, difficult paragraph. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, would someone like to tell me, you know, how do, how do we feel when we see a forest fire or cancer under a microscope, and, and how does that relate to what the author is trying to say? Okay, maybe if we, when we see a forest fire and cancer under a microscope, we feel scared about what could happen to you, and True. maybe that is what the 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 writer wanted to say about you don't know what happened, what could happen, what is your future. Yeah, but at the same time um, these things can have a certain beauty to them and that's that's what makes them, you know, the experience of, of seeing these things um, even more striking or astonishing. It's because there's beauty at the same time as so much potential for death and destruction, beauty and ugliness at the same time. And that's what the author is trying to uh, explain is the experience of war. Uh, by the way, a few people on the chat are asking about the pronunciation of aesthetic. It's pronounced aesthetic. It's sometimes it's, it's even spelled E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C without the I, without the A. Okay. Uh, moving that book on. Is beautiful. Right, it's the study of what's beautiful, or um, at the way that we perceive. Okay, uh, Diego Rafael. Okay, teacher. Hi. Would you like to read the next line? Okay. Um, almost everything is true. Almost nothing is true. Thanks. Uh, Julissa, would you like to read the next sentence? Though it's odd, you're never more alive than when you're almost dead. You recognize what's valuable. Thanks. Uh, any questions? Yeah, what is odd? Uh, strange. Okay. Yes, odd is strange, unusual. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lias, I, I did mute you just now, so if you have a question, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, the red button in the upper right-hand corner. 
because yeah, Elias, we can't hear what you're saying. Now you have uh, I muted you, but there's a red button. Uh, uh, in the, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. At the same time, I'm I'm trying to translate uh, uh, the word uh, English word in French word because uh, I'm just beginning. Uh, a little yes. So uh, what? Can, what word are you trying to understand? Uh, thought, thought is uh, thought is odd. Thought, thought is odd. Oh, though it's though odd. It's, odd. it's uh, although it's it's a one, it's saying um, it's a way of presenting um, contrary ideas. So on the one hand, it's odd. However, you're never more alive. When you're almost dead, it's uh, yeah. Though, although, is, is another wild, way of saying. Uh, wild, uh, wild, wild, wild. Yeah. yeah. Despite the fact that. Right. We can say we're we're, we're ace. We're ace. Sorry, can you say that again? We can say we're ace. We're we're ace. We're ace. Whereas, whereas. Whereas. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Uh. Okay, I think. Uh, oh, I think you're up, Lias. Yes. Would you like to read the next okay. sentence? Firstly, as uh, is as is for the first time, you love what's best in yourself and in the world, and the mate will not be lost. Thanks. So he's he's describing here the experience of feeling like uh, you might soon die and appreciating the world all the more for that. Okay, uh, Mina, would you like to read the next paragraph for us? Okay. Um, at a hour of dusk, you sit at your foxhole fox and look out on a white river turning pinkish red and at the mountains beyond and although in the morning you must cross the river and go into the mountains and do terrible things and maybe die. Thanks. Um, our, the oh. H, the H is not pronounced in this word. Um, otherwise, great job. Also, uh, does, ever, does anyone know what a foxhole is? The fourth house, I wear uh, fox lips. Um, so that's one meaning, I think, but um, he, in this case, but it quite tinkle. Right. It's um, it's like a trench or a hole that a soldier uh, sits in and uh, shoots a gun from. Um, okay. Uh, I think we'll move on to the next half. This is a very long sentence, by the way, right? Okay. So. Uh, would Moncleef, Moncif like to read the second half of the sentence? Even so. Uh, or he might not be there. Uh, Rasal, would you like to give it a shot? Can you read it? Okay, you can. Even so, you find yourself dying the fine colors on the river. You feel wonder and we, and awe at the setting of the sun, uh, and you are filled with heart, with heart, aching, love for how the world could be and always should be. You not you not is not, is not in, uh, but now but but now is not. Thanks. Um, I'm just gonna. Read that the last part again for you. Uh, mm. You are filled with a hard, aching love for how the world could be and always should be, but now is not. not from how. Yeah. What's the meaning of aching love for how the world a could be and it always yeah. should be? <laughs> okay, aching. An ache is a pain, something that hurts, like a pain. wound. Yeah. So. Painful love, and he feels a painful love for the possibilities of the world in the world, the way 
uh, life could be potentially, but in actuality is not. I think it's it's as if he thinks the world could be a good place, but in reality, it's a bad place. Does that okay. uh, clarify it for you? Yes. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Could someone try to answer question five for me? What time of day is it? And how does... Country, one hour... It's uh, midnight, one hour it's after midnight. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the sunset. It's the sunset. Sunset. Yeah. Maybe 6 p.m. Sure, maybe 6 p.m. Yeah. Uh, how does the imagery reinforce the speaker's argument or the what he is trying to say? Uh, if, uh, if no one wants to t uh, try to answer this, I'll, I'll just clarify it for you there. Uh, the, I think the imagery of sunset reinforces the meaning behind what he's saying because um, he's talking about death and beauty and sunset is s symbolic here of uh, the end of life and yet there's beauty in the end of the day but also a, uh, it's a time of day that might also make you sad because it's uh, symbolic of the end so it's bittersweet, we would say. Here, I'll, I'll type that in for you. Okay, any questions? Okay. Uh, Rasal, would you like to read the paragraph starting with, For the Common Soldier? Rasal? Okay, uh, what about Victor, would you like to give it a try? Yes, I'll constantly take it. <clears throat> okay, um, this or, ah, this is for, and um, um, for the corner, so then. Yes. Okay, okay, sorry. For the corner, so there, so there, and, and left, the where the fear, the uh, spirit history, the um, gray cross leaf fa far. fog, and far, 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 far. It did it, it, it net. I don't know net thick, thick it, and permanent. Okay, thick okay, and permanent. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Vera now to finish it off. Thanks. That was uh, that was great. Thanks. Okay. Vera, are, are you there? Yep. Would you like to finish this paragraph for us? Okay. Um, let's go here. There is no clarity. I've just lost. Okay, if you look at my screen... Oh, I see. Yeah. There is no clarity, everything swirls. The old rules are no longer binding. The old truth no longer true. Would you like to go on to the next paragraph, too? I can. Uh, right spills over into wrong. Order blends into health. Hate into love. Unlines into beauty. Lore into energy. Uh, Civil, civility into savagery. The vapors suck you in. Thanks. Um, a few words there uh, that'll go over chaos. This means um, a lack of order, no organization, disorder, disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, ugliness. It's the opposite of beauty here, um, like a, a monster or um, what's ugly. Um, you know, maybe your least favorite uncle. Uh, 
uh, anarchy. It means yeah, no, yeah, I, I no mean. law. Uh, and savagery, savagery. Uh, savagery des uh, describes extreme cruelty or lack of civilization or sophistication. Um, and any anything that any of you would like clarified further? Ghostly. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, Julissa, did did you yeah. say it something? Says of a great ghostly fog. Ghostly, what does it mean? Ghostly. A ghost um, is like a, a spirit of the dead. Like, woo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It comes from ghost. Ghost, ghost yes. Ghostly is adverb. Yeah, it's an adverb I, from ghost. Maybe like a scary. Scary. Um, but also, in, in the way that a ghost... Like without color, maybe, like this? Without color, yes, like a mist or a fog. Um, it's, it's all of those things, yeah. And uh, Mina, did you have a, a question? No, I just um, say the meaning of the ghostly. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Uh, can someone tell me the meaning of permanent? Permanent is uh, sorry. Temporary. It's the opposite of temporary. Yes. What's mean the, va the, the vapors suck you in? The vapors. Mm -hmm. um, the vapors. So the vapors. The vapors. vapors are um, gases of, of that come. You know, when a liquid is heated. Um, it becomes a vapor or fog at night, uh, like a cloud on the, over the ground is a vapor. And so when he says the vapors suck you in, he's um, symbolically describing the experience of war, the uncertainty, the, the kind of haunting quality. There's no clarity, meaning um, uh, you can you can't see clearly in front of you. So when he says the vapors suck you in, he means that this um, kind of this quality of uncertainty and chaos completely takes over you. So covers you. It covers you, yeah. Or uh, it sucks you in as if you were it's drinking you from through a straw. Okay, uh, it's yeah, it's kind of difficult there. Um, okay, uh, Nancy, are you are you there? Uh, Yusef, are you there? Okay, do I have a volunteer to read? You can't tell where you are, or where you are. You're there. And the only certainty is absolute, absolute ambiguity. Ambiguity. Thanks. Ambiguity. What is ambiguity? Uh, something uh, not clear. Something, yeah, uh, true. Yeah. Unclear. Unclear. Not certain. Unclear. Not certain. But also, it, uh, it comes from the Greek root uh, ambi. I think means um, both or two. So yeah, it's as if it's as if you have two opposites and neither of them uh, are true or both of them are true. Two options and it's ambiguous. So if someone is a man that looks like a a woman, you might say that that person is gender ambiguous. We can say vulgarness. Vulgarness. Uh, bothness? Vokiness. Vokiness? F O double G E N uh, E. Uh, can you type it for me? Wait. Where can I type? Uh, uh, there's uh, a chat. Uh, right. uh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Bye, Diego. Um, okay, I'm going to end the broadcast here. Um, but we can continue.